Well, hello again, friends, and I just want to welcome you back to the Heart and Home Improvement series presented by College Park Church. My name is Antoinette Burrell. Well, some of you who know me know that I have two kids. One is 19 and the other one is 15. And they are perfect in every way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. They are not perfect. They have their good days and bad days, just like everyone else. But you know, sometimes I think back to when they were babies. Oh, when they were babies, I used to sneak into their room at night just to watch them sleep. And I would think, wow, look at them. It's a miracle that they are alive. And all I had to do was carry them in my belly, eat, sleep, and breathe. God did the rest. Well, today, Elder Lisa McGann is going to present to us on the topic, Baby Boy, Baby Girl, The Miracle of Procreation. You know, I've been friends with Lisa for many years, and I can tell you, honestly, she is a great role model for what a mother should be. She's patient, loving, kind, sweet. Wow, some days I wish Lisa was my mom. <laughs> But today, she's going to talk to us about what happens before the baby is born. She'll share the divine intervention that takes place inside every mother's womb. Once you understand what a miracle creation is and procreation, you will have no doubt in your mind that creating human life is truly an act of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we just want to thank you for life today, for health and strength to those of us who have it. To those of us who are suffering with illness, Lord, we hope that you will lay a blessing on them and help them to recover as it is your will. Please bless Lisa again today as she brings us the message and help her to reach those family members, people, friends, and everyone who needs to hear a good word from you today. Continue to bless this series and bless our ministry in general as we continue to bring souls closer to Christ. All these things we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, folks, are you ready to roll? We are going to start with a home improvement tip and shortly thereafter, you'll be hearing from Lisa McGann and we hope that this message will be a blessing to you. You're going to learn so much today. And by the time this message is over, you'll be able to turn to your loved one and say, well, hey, if you don't know, now you know. Enjoy the program, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.
now, so maybe we'll just wait till I get the okay from the sound people. Right. All right, so I think you can hear us now, so we're going to do that all again, honey. <laughs> so I think we're going to just jump right in. Jump right in. All right. Into the... Um, so the giveaway. So we'll just say, we'll just recap that we want to thank the last winners. They didn't collect their prize, but they were very honest in letting us know that they had answered a question incorrectly, and they would like the prize to be given to someone that did answer all the questions correctly. So we apologize. We didn't fact check carefully enough. So we're going to redraw really quickly for the garage organizer. Just to let you know, they were sincere, right? But they were not specific. Yes, they So answered. here we go. So... Our winner for um, the garage organizer is 55, Michelle, 55. and 55 belongs to... I'm just looking. It's a little small on my phone. Oh, it belongs to Pierre-André. Congratulations. Pierre-André. Pierre yes. So we know what you'll be putting up in your garage on Sunday morning. Yes. And hopefully with the rake, you can get the kids outside and you can work on some leaves, okay? Yes, and, and it's funny because Pierre told me three days in a row that he needed this, and he did not get it. And now the Lord has brought it to him. So congratulations to the Andre family. All right. So at this time, we're going to go right away into our giving away the prize from before, which was the hammer, the screwdriver set, screwdriver set, sorry, and the measuring tape. That's right. And so do we have to go over that quiz? Over the quiz. All right. Question. So let's go over that quiz. And so speaking of maintenance, you notice on the video, the home improvement tip, there was a lot of maintenance to make sure that that dryer would work at optimum efficiency. And so the Mirande Bridge, the Mirande Bridge, and I talked about that suspension bridge in Italy. I got nervous just looking at it. But the question was, how many years passed before the Mirande Bridge collapsed and why did it collapse, Michelle? Yes, and so, so it collapsed. And so I believe we have the answer coming up on the bridge. And it was, and Finney told us, Elder Finney said it was built to last 100 years. But it only lasted 51 years because of a lack of insufficient maintenance. And so we need to make sure that we're maintaining things, maintaining things. Yes. Okay, question number two. Question number two. Question number two was, what weekly stress reducer did God institute in the Garden of, the Ed of Eden? And the answer is the Sabbath. And we're so thankful for the Sabbath where we get to slow down, rest, Amen. and change pace. Amen. And this evening we're experiencing that. Even though we're under a little bit of stress, it's good stress. It's the Sabbath. And we're glad to be here with you this evening. Okay, question number three. As it goes up on the screen and I, as I move it on my phone... Okay, and the question was, seven ways to reduce stress were shared. One was the replacement technique. Fill in the blanks below. And it was, you must replace pressure with pleasure. pleasure. Pressure with pleasure. So that is the answer to that question. So now we have a draw going on, don't we? Yep. So Do we, we have to put, put that back in? in? Yep. Okay, make sure we put that one back in. Okay, I'm going to twirl that around. And this is for the 20-ounce hammer, the screwdrivers, and the tape measure. And our winner tonight for that prize is, there we go, it is number 23, Michelle, 23. 23. Just looking for it. It's just a little small on my phone. So number 23 is... Gabriel Winata. Gabriel Winata, you win that prize. Congratulations, sweetie. All right. And uh, just make sure you have a parent with you when you start um, swinging that hammer because you could take <laughs> down some walls. It's quite powerful, okay? Yes. So, so tonight, tonight we're going to Tonight I'm away. excited. Uh, we'll be drawing this. Basically, there's no draw on Sabbath tomorrow. So we're doubling up on Sunday evening. So it is the Anchor Hawking it is glass kitchen storage set, and it's tempered tough for microwave use, oven freezer, and dishwasher safe. And it has 24-piece set. So this evening, that's what the draw is for. And so now we're going on to our questions. And, you know, Elder Conrad had a very informative message last evening, and it had to do with money. And so um, it has been said, as I shared 
um, last, last Wednesday evening, the hardest thing to convert after a heart is a wallet. And Jesus wants both your wallet and your heart. More importantly, your heart. And so let's go to the questions this evening. Question number one. So the first question is, what percentage of recorded stories that Jesus told in the Bible were about money? What is the percentage? And uh, he spoke it clearly. It was in the first five minutes of his presentation. And you will be surprised. And if you don't know the answer, go back and review and rewind, all right? OK, so question number two. Question number two. It's a fill in the blank. It's a fill in the blank. And we were just, we were just looking at each other. And I believe I got an elbow at one point. But uh, question number two. There were four financial plans mentioned. Fill in the blank for the missing plan below. There's the one boss plan. It's my money, right? All of my money. That's the one boss plan. Uh, the second option, B, it is a blank, blank, blank. And we want to know what that stands for, OK? That's the fill in the blank. There's the two partner plan. And then I love this. This is the best plan. The best plan is the senior partner plan when God gets involved with our finances. And we've seen that in our own family, haven't we, dear? Mm -hmm. yes, All right. For sure. So question number three, for those of you interested in this lovely set, is in order to liquidate your debt, you should list all debts in order and start repaying your debt from blank to blank. So fill in those blanks. Remember, you have until Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to answer mm -hmm. these questions. And uh, we look forward to getting your responses at the Heart and Home series at gmail.com or at what number, dear? I love saying this, 905-725-1121. Did I get it right? Because I you wasn't did. even looking at it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yes, so we look forward to seeing you again at our next session. God which is bless. Tomorrow. Happy Sabbath.
Hello, and welcome to session eight of our Heart and Home series. First of all, I want to thank Antoinette Burrell very much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, I hope you all heard it. And to Yendri also, Columbia, for teaching us how to clean out our vacuum, our vacuum out our dryers and our dryer vents and prevent fires. So we hope you're being inspired by the renovation tips that we're presenting to you at each of our sessions, since we're all spending more time at home during this pandemic. And we hope that the biblical principles that we're presenting are helpful to you as you manage your home and your life. Now, some people view the Bible as just a bunch of irrelevant stories, thousands of years old, that really don't have an impact on our lives today. But we as Christians view this as the inspired word of God handed down through centuries. And all the information in here is so relevant to our lives today. It's like our guidebook. We highlight it, we take notes, we cross-reference. In this collection of 66 books, you'll find history, prophecy, poetry, love stories, cautionary tales, and all the very relevant advice and information, counsel on all the topics that we're presenting in this series. Secrets of a happy family, resolving conflict, effective communication, parenting, managing stress, and finances. It's all right in here. And if you've missed any of our sessions, you can find them all on YouTube, on Facebook, we're on Instagram, or on our website, www.collegeparkchurch.ca. So let me get started. Let's start with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you so much for the opportunity to bring your word and your counsel to all of those listening today. Please bless all the households of those that are tuning in and watching. Open their hearts and their eyes to the incredible, never-ending love that you have for us. The fact that you created us in your image and you love us more than any earthly parent ever could. And just as we long to connect with those that we're separated from during this pandemic, Lord, you long to connect with us too and for us to have a committed relationship with you. Speak through me as I present your word today. So today, I'm going to be talking about procreation and the miracle of conception. And was it any coincidence that our home renovation tip tonight was talking about clearing out pipes? Hmm, I think not. So just to clarify, I'm not going to be talking about the mechanics or the actions leading to procreation. No, no, no. For that, tune in here on Sunday night, November 1st. When? This coming Sunday night, November 1st at 7 p.m., when you will learn the seven ways to enjoy your sex life more. Oh, she said that in church. Yes, I did. Because who created sex? God. So, Remember, take notes during this session and for every session for the quiz that we have at the beginning of every, uh, every session in the series because there are great prizes to be won. So first of all, how many of you out there have kids, have children? Lots. How many of you don't but wish you did? Or how many of you do but wish you didn't? Don't raise your hands if your children are in the room. In most cultures, including our own, ooh, married women are expected to have children. It seems like right after we walk down the aisle, people start asking, there we go, so when are you going to have a baby? Even in the very first chapter of the Bible, in Genesis 1, 28, right after it talks about man and woman being created, it says... Then God blessed them 
And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. That was a pretty tall order if you ask me. But here we are with 7.8 billion people in the world. You know, it never ceases to amaze me the lengths and expense that some couples will go to to have a baby. Getting daily hormone injections, charting their ovulation, their temperature, having sex at prescribed times, then racing to the fertility clinic right after. And then there's the pain of the whole process of in vitro fertilization, injections to extract, injections to implant. The whole process of procreation just becomes a chore and not at all the pleasurable experience that it was intended to be. Last year, on September 5, 2019, a woman in India named, and I'm going to try and pronounce this, Ermati Mangama, became the world's oldest living mother to give birth at the age of, wait for it, 74. Can you believe it? She conceived through in vitro fertilization, IVF, and delivered twin baby girls by C-section. Why, you may ask? It turns out that she and her husband had been trying to have a baby since getting married in 1962. For over 56 years, they went to doctor after doctor, hospital after hospital, trying everything they could to have a baby. Her husband, Raja Rao, said, we faced a lot of social stigma in our village for not having a child. We could not bear the taunt since our marriage, so we tried our best, but now we hope that God will bless us. And Raja, I hope he continues to do so with plenty of help and energy. And that village, you know how they say it takes a village to raise a child? I hope that village comes to your assistance too. Now, Aramati was the oldest living mother to give birth, but we know of another woman in the Bible, in Genesis, who gave birth naturally and miraculously at age 90. 90, her name was Sarah. And her husband was Abraham at 100 years old. And at 90, she gave birth to a son, as God had promised her. But conception at any age truly is a miracle of epic proportions. We're going to watch a little film strip right now, a little uh, a movie from National Geographic that shows us how the process goes. Over 3 million babies are born each year in the United States alone. Worldwide, the highest fertility rate is found in Niger, where the average woman gives birth to approximately 6.49 children in her lifetime. Singapore sits on the opposite end of the spectrum at just 0.83, less than one birth per woman. While the number of births, customs, and traditions vary from culture to culture, the developmental process is essentially universal. Derived from the Latin word pregnantum, meaning before birth, pregnancy is the period in which the fetus develops inside the womb. <clears throat> Typically lasting around 40 weeks, human pregnancies are divided into three trimesters of three months each. Pregnancy begins in the uterus, where a sperm fertilizes an egg. If the sperm carries an X chromosome, the baby will become female, while a Y chromosome will result in the baby becoming male. The fertilized egg, or zygote, divides repeatedly as it travels through the fallopian tube, implanting itself on the uterine wall to form both the embryo and a specialized organ known as the placenta. Found only in eutherian or placental mammals, the placenta will manage waste and provide key nutrients, oxygen, and hormones via the umbilical cord. The brain, which will continue to grow and develop throughout the pregnancy, makes up nearly half of the embryo in these early stages. As the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, along with all major organs, continue to develop in month three, the baby will begin to look more and more human with each passing day. The second trimester lasts from weeks 13 through 27. 
The fetus will more than double in size during this time, and soon its movements may be felt by the mother. Hearing first develops around week 18, but the fetus will not respond to sounds outside of the womb until approximately week 25. Starting at week 28 and lasting up until delivery, the third trimester is a time for final touches such as eyelashes and taste buds. With most major development complete, the fetus will gain nearly half a pound a week. To make room for this rapid growth, the mother's internal organs adjust significantly throughout the pregnancy. Dropping lower into the pelvis, a fetus typically turns heads down in preparation for birth. Most bones will have hardened by this time, though the skull will remain relatively soft to ease the delivery process. Labor is divided into stages, beginning with the dilation of the cervix and resulting in the delivery of both the baby and the placenta. Despite thousands of years of human pregnancies, scientific understanding has only recently begun to catch up, leading to an increase in success and safety for both mother and child. As our understanding of pregnancy continues to develop, so do technology and reproductive medicine, with much more in store for the future of pregnancy. So let's uh, break this down. Every month, an egg or ovum, there we go, which is smaller than a dot, smaller than the, than the period at the end of your sentence on a piece of paper, gets released from an ovary and finds its way down the fallopian tube to the uterus, which is usually about the size of a pear and holds about two tablespoons of fluid. Meanwhile, millions of sperm come flooding into the uterus. Now, each sperm, head to tail, is only about one five hundredth of an inch, or one twentieth of a millimeter. They're microscopic. It takes about 8,500 of them to equal the size of that one tiny little egg. You wonder, how do they even find each other? But once that egg is fertilized by the sperm, it starts to divide. Here's what we look like after two days, two days after conception. One cell splits into two, two cells split into four, four into eight, eight into 16, and so on and so on. The initial weeks of development are the most rapid with exponential growth. The heart alone at four weeks is growing at a million cells per second. If the fetus continued to grow at that speed for the entire nine months, it'd be one and a half tons at birth. But miraculously, those cells know how to slow down. They know how to form themselves into whole systems and organs. A tiny beating heart, a liver, a spleen, lungs, a brain, a skeletal structure that's strong enough to support the baby, but still soft enough that it can get squeezed out of the mother and not break at birth. And at birth, a baby's circulatory system has almost 60,000 miles, 100,000 kilometers of blood vessels. Do you know how long that is? Two and a half times the circumference of the Earth. Amazing. And babies have their own whole developed reproductive system complete with eggs in a little baby girl when she's born. So think about that. When I was pregnant with my daughter, carrying her inside me, she had within her little uterus all the eggs that will eventually become my grandchildren. Fascinating, miraculous. In addition to the baby, there's that placenta, that flat cake-like structure with tentacles that are attached into the uterus and attached to the embryo or fetus by the umbilical cord. And it maintains separate bloodstreams between the baby and the mother, but it allows the exchange of chemicals between the two. It serves as the baby's lungs, supplying oxygen to it. It serves as the baby's kidneys, removing waste from the baby's blood. 
It serves as its stomach and intestines, providing vitamins and nutrients. And that uterus that started out this size, it stretches to this, this size. This is a 10 pound bag of potatoes. And when you think about it, with the baby being born at seven or eight pounds, the placenta, the amniotic fluid, we're carrying this. And actually, my last baby was nine and a half pounds, so this was all baby. Now, gentlemen, imagine squeezing this out of your body. And they call us the weaker vessel. Now, Alexander Tsiaras, who is a mathematician, an artist, and developer of lenses and software that actually scanned and photographed the entire process of conception and fetal growth, said this. The magic of the mechanisms inside each genetic structure, saying exactly where that nerve cell should go, the complexity of these, the mathematical models of how these things are indeed done are beyond human comprehension. He said, even though I'm a mathematician, I look at this with marvel. It's a mystery, it's magic, it's divinity. Divinity indeed. In Psalm 100, David says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. In Psalm 139, verses 13 to 17, he said, You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Your eyes saw my unformed body. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. And how precious is each baby boy and girl. Miracles of love. Now, Jesus referred to the miracle of childbirth when he talked with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a religious leader and ruler of the Jews in Jesus' time. He met secretly with Jesus at night, not wanting his colleagues, who hated Jesus, to know that he himself was a believer and a follower. Jesus said to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see this, the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was flummoxed, confused. Be born again? Go back into my mother's womb? What, what do you mean? But Jesus wasn't talking about physical rebirth. He was talking about spiritual rebirth. He clarified, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Born of what? Water and the spirit. Just like the miracle of human life, procreation, birth, has two basic components, ovum, or egg, and sperm. The miracle of spiritual life, recreation, rebirth, also has two basic components, spirit and water. Now, you may be wondering, what is she talking about? What was, what was Jesus talking about? To be born of the spirit means to be converted to commit your life to God, to do an about face, to ask God for and to allow his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide you, to stop living on your own, doing what you want to do, but to do what God wants you to do, to allow him to lead and guide you, to give you hope, to give you peace, to give you a purpose, to commit to nurturing a committed relationship with him, and allowing him to recreate you from the inside out, to change your character into his, to accept his love and forgiveness, his mercy and his grace, and to allow him to cleanse you of your bad habits, your bad attitude, your addictions, your selfishness, any guilt, any shame, any regret. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've ever done, no matter how far you've fallen. This isn't possible in and of ourselves. 
In the Bible, in the book of Titus, we read, he saved us, not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And being born of water, that's baptism. Not as some know it, dipping a baby's head or into a water or sprinkling it with water or, or pouring water on it. That's a practice that's evolved through the centuries, but it really isn't biblical, and I'll tell you why. Baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, baptizo, meaning to plunge or immerse. And the method of baptism really should agree with the meaning, right? Both literally and symbolically. Paul says in the book of Romans, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, that we too may live a new life. In the biblical book of John, right after that conversion discussion between Jesus and Nicodemus is recorded, it says that John the Baptist was baptizing people in a specific place because there was much water there. He wasn't using basins or jugs. He was in the water. Similarly, in the book of Acts, there's the story of the baptism of a high-ranking government official. He was the minister of finance, if you will. It says he was in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. It says that he and Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, went down into the water, and Philip baptized them. Then they came up out of the water. We know that Christ himself was baptized as an adult when he chose to be, going down into and coming up out of the water. He didn't need to be baptized because he, after all, was without sin. But again, he came as a living example of how we should live and what we should do. But I'm afraid of water. Or I don't want to mess up my hair. My makeup is going to run. What are my friends going to say? You may think, I don't need to be baptized. I believe in God. I'm a good person. Don't fool yourself. Remember, Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Just like getting married is a show of commitment between two people, leaving their single lives behind to be joined together. So baptism is a show of commitment of your joining your life to Christ, leaving behind your worldly attitudes and lifestyles to be one with him, to be like him. Further in that conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said to him those words that all Christians seem to have committed to memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Followed immediately in verse 17, by the words that many Christians seem to forget. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you want to know more about how to make that commitment, please contact us. Look up our website, collegeparkchurch.ca. Find us on Facebook, on Instagram, we have lots of free resources. We can book to meet with you. Our pastors are here for you. We'd be happy to help you in your spiritual journey. What's stopping you? 
right now, I'd like us to bow our heads and have a word of prayer again. Dear Father in heaven, you love us so much. We know that we are yours. You created us. Each one of us is a living miracle formed by you, made in your image. You long to live with us. You long to be in our hearts and our minds. You've put in us that little conscience. And whether we drown it out and try and do our own will, Lord, we're asking you to come into our hearts and minds, strengthen us. Help us to take the time each day to read your word, to read the Bible, to pray, to converse with you, and listen for your leading and conversing with us. Remove from us all our evil desires. Loosen Satan's grip on us. If we are not for you, Lord, we're against you. Please come into our hearts and minds. Turn us to you. Help us to put away any selfish desires. Help us to overcome any any jitters, any nerves, any misgivings we may have. Help us to come into the fullness of life with you. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. This evening, I just want to say a big thank you to Elder Lisa for not just sharing biology with us, but sharing the most important thing, and that is the new birth. As she presented tonight, my heart was warmed, and I thought of someone who might be watching for the first time, or someone who's been following us along in this series. Um, I said yes to Jesus all over again this evening, and I pray that you will too. I thank you that he died that I might have life, and, and to be born again, that's what Jesus desires for all of us. And so this evening, I pray that uh, you will have the courage to follow up as you continue to follow us, and that you will make a decision tonight that you will follow Jesus. Uh, this evening, I want to let you know that we are two weeks in, and we're not finished yet. This is a series that will keep on going, and tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you. The message is a very important message. We've seen it in our communities. Unfortunately, we've even seen it in our church. When a couple says, we don't wanna do it again, we don't wanna do it anymore, and divorce, that ugly word. Well, tomorrow, what God has joined together, six gems to prevent divorce, I pray that you will join us tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Elder Sam Katundo will be sharing the message. Our desire is that not only will your heart be transformed during this series, but also your home. God bless you. Sing along tonight our family prayer song as we conclude the message this evening.